Hello and welcome back here on my channel. Today I'm going to give you a room tour of my new workshop. Hope you enjoy and let's get started. So for a general workflow it was very important for me to have a designated space for manufacturing which is over here and then also a space for packing which is over here. I have the stainless steel table over here that I'm using mainly for manufacturing. The ingredients down here as you can see and then this table here is a table that is fantastic for video filming because the bamboo butcher block is not reflecting like the stainless steel table does and i think it's just an amazing and cozy background uh, whenever i'm making an overhead video so now i'm going in area by area and show you a little bit around so moving over here yeah, yeah. is the stainless steel table with the ingredients underneath. Up here I did add some mirrors just because mirrors have the tendency to open up a space and it's nice to work here and then to see the back of the room. My packing station opens up another dimension so to speak. Something else that I added to the table is a lamp. You can see it's fixed right here at the end of the table. It's quite wide. Actually a computer desk or computer screen lamp and it's very nice if you want to have your workspace really well lit. For example, you can see the digits on the scale, you can see whatever you're doing. I also keep this electrical stove here for the double boiler, things that I need to melt down with the double boiler. And over here I keep my recipes in laminated form so that they can be wiped clean easily. Underneath the table I keep my ingredients and I have a little system here is a big sturdy bucket with a lid where I keep my stash. This is from Ikea. I they came in different sizes and this smaller size here, two of them really fit well on top of this one and it's really nice and stable. So here I have the other oils, soft oils, mm. then over here I keep my powders, citric acid, baking soda. And then I have shea butter, coconut oil, palm oil, cocoa butter, and what not. Moving over here, this is just a very ordinary microwave to melt down ingredients. I keep rubbing alcohol bottles, a couple of these always ready if I need it. Here is just my hand mixer for scrubs and body butters and then I have a fridge. Mainly refrigerated melted oils and butters that I need for whipped body butter but I also keep other ingredients like here's avocado butter. like powdered milk that I need for some projects, cucumber extract and some other things. Also vegetable glycerin and this is donkey milk powder. The freezer compartment is empty right now, but this is something that I need to freeze the milks whenever I'm making milk soaps. Here is the sink. I absolutely love it. It's quite deep and wide, so I can comfortably wash all my soap buckets in here. And underneath, I just keep my regular cleaning supplies. Nothing fancy. Moving over here is where I keep my colorants, pigments, micas, and also liquid colorants. So for the micas and pigments, I get it, I transfer it in these jars here. You can get it off of Amazon. I will leave the link down in the description along with all things that I'm using here, or at least an option for your respective area as I live in Europe. So my colorants, unfortunately, they come in these bags here, very impractical to soak because you have to put your hands in it, you don't have time for all this. So I just transfer it in here and then I just add a label to it so I know what is inside and I'm good to go. Underneath here I have more pigments and then the titanium dioxide, I like to keep it in such a bakery bottle, this is the water soluble version. So I always have it ready to go. And for glitter, I like to keep them in such salt and pepper shakers. That's the most practical 
method for me you could also use spray pumps like this one here also i personally prefer this one and then i keep these wooden sticks here just to scoop out the pigments from the jars and then i can just dispose of it here are baskets full of fragrant oils different kinds of and then over here i have cake turning plate for piping a toolbox a see-through toolbox where i keep basically all my piping tips cobblers piping nail piping block so i have everything in one place and i can see what i have and what i'm missing that's quite good down here i have a bucket full of essential oils or essential oil blends so I'll, i keep them all together i try to keep the fragrance somehow categorized even though i think it's not easy at all and then over here are the flavor oils. Flavor oils are the um, fragrances that you want to have whenever you're making lip products like lip balms, sugar scrubs for lips and so forth. So these are all the different things. And then here in the back, I have the primary colors in liquid colorants that I use for predominantly for melt and pour. And then in this little pocket here, I have cups, little cups, big cups. Like if I need premix, pigments with oil or with rubbing alcohol, depending on what I'm doing, then an extra squeeze bottle, because you never know. And this other Omar shelf here, this is by the way a shelf from Ikea, it's convenient because you can customize or the height of the respective shelves. So here I keep my multi-bar cutter, this is a one that was custom made for me and I could choose the width of the guitar strings to, you know, make it fit exactly what I need according to my mold. And then I have a single wire cutter over here. And then here is a stand mixer, then the crock pot here. And here are two slab molds, the one with the dividers and silicone liner inside. Absolutely love these. And then underneath here, I have another bucket full of fragrance oils. And here, because why not some more fragrance oils? You know how it is when you start to amass fragrance oils. I have a similar situation with my silicone molds as well. I'm sure some of you might relate to this as well. In the middle of the room, I keep my IKEA kitchen island or kitchen table, whatever you want to call it. I absolutely love it. It has a bamboo butcher block, which is very easy to clean. It has two very deep, big drawers where I keep the tools and things that I most frequently need. Like for example, my silicone spatulas. This is a um, very interesting spoon scale. I have spoons and um, a mini mixer, my whisks or measuring spoons, soaping goggles and my stamp. And also, of course, the infrared thermometers. I'm very happy with this um, table. It is stainless steel underneath. It has two shelves where I keep my double boilers, a stainless steel container, then all my glass containers, Pyrex jugs, and then a smaller basket here with some smaller glass containers. And underneath I keep uh, all of the tablets and cutting boards. They are very practical whenever you need the space. You can just move your project around very easily. Over here is where I keep the finished packaged products like soaps. So I have a bucket for every type of soap that I have more or less, like Tropicana, then Jamaican coffee, vetiver, spicy honey over here, and then uh, the black raspberry vanilla soap. And then other products like bath truffles, charcoal soap, these are sugar plum, the donkey milk soap, body butters and scrubs over here, hair oil, beard oil, some other man's product, hand cream and lip balm, we need to restock very soon. Then up here, I keep empty containers, like for example, for this donkey milk soap. These are actually truffle boxes that I got from a 
company in Germany. Then uh, empty aluminum tins, different sizes, 100 milliliters, 60 milliliters, and then I have a couple of black ones too for special projects. Down here are other soaps, like for example, the all natural oatmeal soap, shampoo bars, other manly products, bourbon and tobacco that I recently restocked. And then down here, I keep a bucket just for bags like sturdy big bags for transport. Here are empty containers like for hand cream. And over here are molds, molds, molds and more molds. It's a ridiculous amount that I have. I try to keep them like in categories. Like for example, here are the seasonal ones like for Easter, you can see here this Easter egg molds or the gingerbread houses. All the kind of Christmas molds here are all the square molds that I have. I have a lot of these pink regular rectangle molds that come in handy when you have to make large projects. Then here I have a little feet mold, some leaf mold, different types of shapes, or also these um, brambleberry column molds. Here are bakery types, and then the ones that I use to make cupcakes. Up here are some more soap cupcakes ready to go. This is just a bucket with an experiment that I made on my channel with different types of colorants. For example, this one was saffron or this one here, mother root powder. I just keep it for future reference just to see how they develop over time. And I keep just empty pockets. It's always good to have like for additional products and so forth. Here are pipette glasses candle making stuff. Up here are drugs and mixing containers for bigger soap batches. Over here are more molds. So this category, believe it or not, is molds that I don't need so often. Look at the size of this one. Anyway, so over here are body butter containers. Then here are ingredients. So over here I keep salts salt, Dead Sea salt, Himalayan salt, and all types of salts. Here is beeswax and lanolin in this bucket over here. And here are the colorants that are still in bags. So I know once the bag is empty here, I have to order more. Then here I have the liquid ingredients, like for example, polysorbate 80, witch hazel, then rubbing alcohol. And here are the sugars, different types of sugars and exfoliants let's say in general like for example this loofah sponge here that can be used to make some nice melt and pour projects for in summer why not and then here are different kinds of other ingredients like pumice sand or bentonite clay tomato powder chamomile flowers and spices that can be used also like for example juniper berries or um, poppy seeds then here I have some more piping stuff, like the reusable piping bags and then some funny chocolate maker bags. These are interesting because you have the volume on it and um, you can seal it on top. So whenever you're trying to make smaller type of piping project, this come in handy. I also have a piping bag holder. Very convenient if you have to make complex kind of pipings with multiple colors and so forth. You can just pop it in here and you're not going to avoid the giant mess. Then here are lip balm tubes and a lip balm pouring tray that I keep in here when you want to make 50 lip balms at a time. And then up here I have different types of molds like the Rambleberry 5 pound mold with the silicone liner and the slide very convenient for soap making. Here's a swirling tool. I have a soap beveler and a soap shaver over here. And here are some other um, loaf molds. <clears throat> this one is just silicone. It's a skinny tall mold. Here are the regular ones that come off of Amazon. Also very practical. It's like for a 10 batch soap. And then up here is my bigger mixing container very convenient as well, a regular pot, and then some stainless steel bowls for mixing up powders. In here I just keep some overflow of things or things that I don't need frequently, like for example 
you know, some straws or some tools to make uh, things with soap dough. Additional pipettes. In here are some glass containers or small ones here in case I want to make like a project, something special. And then here is just additional stick blender, backup stick blender, so to speak, backup soap, soap goggles. And then these uh, bath bomb molds that I basically never make. And then I keep things that I don't need very much a little bit tucked away. I keep a container for empty bottles so I can then once in a while go to the shop and recycle them properly. And back here is a corner where I keep all my cleaning supplies or at least the cleaning tools. Moving on to the packing area, yes. I have a video dedicated just to this packing area here because for me it was really a game changer to have something where I can just package and take care of shipping and so forth. So in general, this is like a workbench. It has a little roof here, if you can call it that way, where I keep different pockets with different things, tissue papers and so forth. The soap wrapping tool, my business cards. I added a pegboard from Ikea with different kinds of pockets so I can keep my scissors and different kinds of thank you rolls and pens and exactos, ribbon cutters and highlighters and whatnot. I also keep my calculator here and different kinds of tapes, my scale, very important. If you want to send packages then you can weigh them out and see how much it would cost. Here I just keep some note papers or little tool see through toolboxes. For example, in here I keep my acrylic stamps, my projects of the past. I also keep my heat gun here in a ceramic bowl for safety and ease of use. The board bench uh, was made of plywood and then I just added this plastic roll in wooden look to make the look a little bit cohesive. And then I use self self-healing mat, which it is heat safe, but also like if you cut through it, it heals by itself. It, the workbench comes with a drawer where I keep tissue papers that I use whenever I have to make a gift box or I have to send parcels out. And underneath there is space for three bigger containers, one for the gift boxes in it for different occasions. Oh, I also have a wooden one, like maybe for a manly gift set. Then over here I keep the packing peanuts in a container, so it's easy for me to take out some of the peanuts and then add it to a box. And here are some shredded paper in different colors and some other materials for packing, for example, shrink and bubble wrap and so forth. Then moving over here is where I keep mailers, bubble mailers. I also have some, some other boxes here. I <clears throat> added a light here underneath this um, shelf, just very simple with this plastic, um, I don't know how you call it in English. Then I have different boxes in different sizes here, also for shipping. And then here I keep all kinds of cellophane bags or shrink bags for soaps, little other bags. And then here my toolbox. Underneath I do have all the labels that I need categorized. And then for the soaps I made a dedicated one just because I found myself always going through a bunch of papers trying to find the soap paper that I need. You know, when it happens to me that I'm losing repeatedly time, then I just find a system that works well. So for example, let's say black raspberry vanilla. I open it, I have the front labels, I have the back labels, and I'm good to go. So next to the labels, I keep these design paper blocks, different types for different occasions. For example, Valentine's Day or Christmas. Because I like to make my own gift boxes. Underneath here I have my crafty corner, so to speak, and here are all these We Are Memory Keepers 
punch boards that I use to make different kinds of gift packaging, be it gift box or gift bag or candy box or envelopes and all types. It's very cool in my opinion to have a handmade product in a handmade packaging. And here are some more ribbons, the one that I don't use on a totally frequent basis, the other ones I keep on my pegboard. And then here are more things like more design paper, ribbon stamps, different things that I can use as an embellishment for the handmade packaging. I also do have other gift boxes that are, oh, this one came from Amazon, they come flat and then you can assemble it. This is for example more for Easter and then I do keep it easy whenever somebody asks for a gift box, you're good to go. Up here I have some samples. And I have more types of bags like for singular soaps or similar things. Here is my stamp with my logo on it from No Issue. Really cute. Here are some bags for some soap delivery. It's always good to have these at hand. And then up here I have some Easter egg packaging and some Christmas stuff still. So this is what concerns my packing station. I hope you enjoyed this room tour here. If you're interested in more such soap making related videos, please check out the playlist here on the screen where you will find many more. I see you in the next video and in the meantime, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye-bye.